All right, it looks like we're holding pretty steady, so we'll go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be going over the dropout report, um, so that will be due um, in October. Next week we have a webinar on Tuesday again at 10 a.m. Uh, for the October 1 enrollment report uh, for EPS, so that will be at 10 a.m. Please feel free to join us. Uh, links for that can be found on the webinar page of the Help Desk website. Uh, in October, we'll be doing the EPS staff certification report, and then we have a few office hour weeks where we will be available for questions about reports that are open, um, and we do have a few topics that we'll be going over, um, but feel free to join us. Those are registration required. Registration can also be found on that webinars tile. Resources for today's report, data reporting instructions page, is going to house your report instructions for dropout on the data reporting instructions page. You'll have the dropout report about halfway down. This is going to go through steps for locating the report in NEO, exiting student codes, um, how those exits kind of map to the data uh, to the dropout report, um, and then how reporting for an SAU um, and reporting school are determined can also be found um, on that document as well. The dropout report, so dropout reporting is required for all grades of compulsory age students. Definition of a dropout is a student who meets the criteria is uh, uh, for dropout is a student that's enrolled during the federal reporting year uh, from 10-1-2022 to 9-30-2023. So any student that was enrolled during that time and is expected to return to school by October 1st, 2023. Um, if they do not come back on that 10-1 date, then they are uh, going to be considered a dropout on the federal report. The reporting range is really the 10-1 uh, date, uh, looking at enrollments compared to uh, for 2022 to 2023 compared to enrollments on 10-1. This report opens on um, October 2nd and is due on the 15th of October. Dropout reporting is based on enrollments that are in state synergy. Uh, these are based on enrollments that overlap October 1st, so they have to begin on October 1 or overlap October 1 in order to be um, considered an enrollment for the dropout report. Any changes that need to happen to a NEO report need to happen in the state synergy system. Um, so you can update via manual entry into the student module, or you can have an enrollment upload done to state reporting st status module. Uh, and then that automatic ETL hourly will happen uh, to upload the reports in NEO, uh, NEO student data. Students who are exited from State Synergy with any of these codes will be excluded from dropout reporting. Um, so transferring to a different state, transferring outside the country, transferring to home instruction, we wouldn't expect to see those students enrolled on October 1 uh, because they have gone elsewhere. They won't be in the state, um, so they will be um, excluded. They should not be showing up on your graduation report or on your dropout report, excuse me. Um, graduation. Um, that one, if students have graduated, they won't be showing up either. So any of these are students who are not expected to return on October 1st. Um, so if a student should have been exited with one of these codes last school year and was not exited with this code, then you need to add a one day enrollment for 7-1 with the correct exit code to remove them from a dropout report. So if any updates need to happen for any students um, who have this type of situation, um, they may be showing up on your dropout report, uh, they'll need to be updated to reflect one of these codes in order to be excluded from that report. Exit codes that do meet the definition of a dropout. So if students are uh, expected to return and do not have an enrollment on 10-1, uh, then they are going to be on the dropout report. So any transfers to a public school, transfers to um, an institution transfers to a charter school. All of those are expected to have an enrollment in state synergy. And if they do not have an enrollment on 10-1 for in state synergy at any school in the state, then they are going to be considered a dropout. 
We also have codes that do automatically translate to a dropout, uh, which are aged out, discontinued schooling, schooling, not enrolled, unknown status, withdrew to adult ed, and withdrew to workforce programs. So those are dropouts on the report. Again, I'd like to emphasize that the enrollment is based on October 1 enrollments. This year, that is a Sunday. So you'll want to make sure that your enrollments for 10 1 are, um, if, if you have a student who's starting on Monday, 10 2, you want to make sure that that student is enrolled on 10 1 so they're not on anyone's dropout report. So you can see here that the first line that enrollment overlaps October 1, that's going to be, it's going to be all set. Uh, the second one, there is a gap in the enrollment. The student transferred over the weekend and they were not enrolled until 10-2. That student will be look will look like a dropout because that enrollment is not starting on 10-1. The last line shows that a 10-1 en enrollment will uh, not count as a dropout. So 10-1 is your date that you want to make sure you're entering for students who so that they do not count as a dropout. To access the report in NEO, you'll go to NEO student data, student reports, and then the dropout report. In order to have access to the NEO reports, you will have to have an access request submitted and you'll have to have an, ac uh, an active staff assignment in NEO staff in order for us to process that access request if you do not already have access. This is just what it looks like. So we're going to head to student data, student reports, and then on the list of reports, we're going to go about halfway down, alphabetical order, dropouts, certification report, and dropouts details reports. The certification report is going to give you a summary of just the district and you want to verify your accounts for each school. Uh, once the data has been verified on this page, then the superintendent is going to um, certify at the bottom. Here you can link to your details reports in order to show um, your students who are counted in these uh, aggregate counts here. And this report is going to be for the previous school year 2022-2023. So once you link into your details report, you can see what each student's status was for last school year. Um, so you can search this to see um, students who maybe need to be on this report to verify that they're here. You can also export this to send to, to school principals to see if the status is accurate for all of these students um, to make sure that the data is valid. You can sort the columns here and then you your reported grade is your grade that the student is expected to be in this school year. So all of the data that's entered um, here is from the previous year, with the exception of the reported grade, which is going to be the year the school that um, this grade that the student should be in this year. Just want to go through a couple of scenarios here. So this first student is transferred to a main public school in a different LEA. So this student was expected to return and be enrolled in a different district in state synergy on 10-1. Looks like this student was not exited. They were exited on 930. Um, so that would be a situation where you would want to reach out to the school where the student is transferring to in order to make sure that they have the enrollment starting on that 10-1 date so that they are removed from the dropout report for this district. Transferring to a charter school is the same as transferring to a public school. They are expected to have an enrollment in state synergy, so they will need to be. Um, so if the student does not have an enrollment on that 10 one day at the charter school, they will uh, reach out to that charter school and verify that the student is attending there um, and uh, go from there. Not enrolled eligible to return um, indicates that a student was expected to return, so you'll want to uh, find that student uh, and figure out uh, where they have ended up. If they transferred over the summer out of state, then you'll want to add like a one day enrollment for that student to show that they've transferred out of state or whatever their situation may be. Um, if they did not come back, then they would count as a dropout. And then this last one, the student aged out, which means that um, they are going to be on the dropout report. There's um, that 
is a code that tracks right to dropout. A few notes. So October 1 is a Sunday. Students need to be enrolled on October 1 or they will be on the dropout report. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind that those dates do need to start on October 1 or overlap October 1. If a student is on the dropout report, but they have transferred, then you'll need to contact the school that the student transferred to in order to ensure that the student was enrolled. You'll want to verify this uh, student uh, state ID number and uh, make sure that that correct ID number was enrolled. Verify that the start date overlaps 10-1 um, or starts on 10-1. And then you'll want to contact the help desk if you notice that a a uh, student was mistakenly added as a duplicate student, so a second ID number may have been created. If the other district did an SSID number import, um, then they may have got uh, enrolled the student under a different ID. If that's the case, you'll want to reach out to us about that one. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, if you have questions after this webinar, please feel free to reach out to the help desk. Um, you can email uh, medums.helpdesk at main.gov, or you can give us a call 207-624-6896. If you'd like some training in Synergy or NEO, please feel free to reach out to me directly, alexandra.cookson at main.gov, or give me a call at 207-446-3897. We'll give it a moment for any questions coming in about this report. Um, and once we start to see some numbers drop, we'll go ahead and end our webinar today. And um, I'll just chime in here at the end because this um, we came across it last year and Ali mentioned it twice, um, but making sure that if a student is going to a new school over that October 1st weekend, mm -hmm. um, we're asking that the receiving school pick them up for October 1st rather than the place they left since presumably they're going to be spending the perhaps the rest of their school year at their new school. So it makes more sense to give them the subsidy count rather than the school they were only attending for a month. So that's our logic there. Normally, you know, we ask you guys to only enroll them for dates they're actually getting instruction, but obviously we can't have zero October counts for an entire school year. So we kind of have to uh, flex a little bit here. So. Uh, receiving schools, please pick these kids up for October 1 if they're going to be starting with you on October 2nd. And we did have a question come in about the NEO report showing 2021 2022. That is because the report is not currently open. Uh, this is a, in preparation for that report, so you will not see that open uh, for 2022 2023 until the 2nd of October. Right, because we we're just kind of getting a little bit ahead of it, but we can't know who's not enrolled on October 1 until October 1 is here. All right, it does look like we are starting to see some attendees drop off. I have not seen any new questions come into the Q&A. All right, we will go ahead and drop off then. Thank you all for attending today. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday and we look forward to seeing you next week with our um, October 1 student enrollment webinar. Thank you, everybody.